Next, we'll learn about a feature of the Python language called a property method. In some cases, we want the value of instance attributes to be computed on demand. For example, if we want to access the second element of a linked list, we might want to have a second attribute. But that attribute shouldn't store the second element, because that second element is already stored as the first element of the rest of the list. So let's say I have a linked list s. I would like to have an attribute second, which gives me the number 4. I'd like to be able to use that attribute in an assignment statement in order to change it, at which point the second element would be 6, and the linked list would be 3, followed by the list 6 and then 5. Now how would we implement this behavior? One way is to just rewrite our linked list class from scratch in order to have first and second attributes. But that doesn't seem very desirable. Instead, what we'd like to do is implement second as something that gets computed on demand as the first element of the rest of the list, but without using any method calls. So here, we access it just by saying s.second without a function call notation. And here we can assign to it directly, even though it's part of another list. We do this by defining methods for lookup and assignment of this attribute, and then using the property decorator in order to designate that this method will be called whenever the attribute is looked up on an instance. This handles the lookup case, but if we also want to handle attribute assignment, then we need to use an attribute.setter decorator on a method to designate that that method defines how this property attribute can be assigned. The attribute must already exist as a property method for the attribute setter notation to be used. Let me show you a demo. Here's our linked list class. Right now, there's no notion of second. One way I could think about adding this is to write down second as a method, which returns self.rest.first. Now there's s. s.second is a bound method, and if I call it, I get the number 4. The only thing that writing at property does is it allows me to avoid this set of parentheses. So instead of having second be a bound method, it will automatically be called, and it will appear as if second is just a regular instance attribute of s. So now I can get s.first, s.second, and s.rest.second in order to get all the elements of the linked list. Now to support assignment, I have to define yet another method. I give it the same name, but I also give it a value and this one is going to be used for assigning to second. Now, assigning to the second value of a linked list actually just means assigning to the first attribute of the rest of the list. At this point, s.second is 4. If I change it to 6, then s.second will be 6. And if I look at all of s, 6 will have changed. Now, it is really the case that these two methods are being called implicitly, even though there is no at method call notation here. And that's because of these special property and setter decorators that make these methods get called automatically whenever the corresponding attribute is accessed. 